Hello, I'm Harriet. I'm a freelance motion graphics designer and I'm going to take you through a project I created using kinetic typography using a variety of core melt plugins in After Effects CS3. First, let's watch the completed project. Liquefying bricks of image stacks on plasmatic ribbons of 3D pixel sticks. A hazy dream awakes me. Okay, so here we are in Adobe After Effects CS3 with my typography project, and I'm going to begin halfway through after too much coffee, no more waiting. So here you can see this effect I've created. You can create looks which aren't obvious using Core Melt products by combining built-in effects like Kaleidoscope. So here I've generated a subtle audio reactive background using Core Melt VVU, which is located here. And I'm using Simple 3D. So here it is on this layer. I've chosen an input from the After Effects layer, which is, this is all my layers here. So I'm just putting the voice into the layer, which you can see is on layer 109, which is down here. I've split the voice and music into separate channels for more versatility. I've added kaleidoscope and tint I'm using the stylish mirroring, and I've tinted it orange. Okay, next we have spinning rainbow discs which is on this layer, which is a text layer, and I've got Core Melt Chromatic Glow, which is located in Luminous Glows and Blur Chromatic Glow. You can see that I've offset the green, the red, and the blue to make it more rainbow-like. And I've animated them as they split apart in the timeline. Okay, next we have God Rays, which is pretty fast. And on these two layers, I've got one, which is just the straight God Rays, which has got two sets of God Rays on it, which I've keyframed the ray center on the bottom one is moving from left to right and the top one is moving from right to left and then on the text layer above this I'm using optical glow, fast blur and sparkle edges all of these are located in C2 luminous glows and blows I've also increased the raised strength and used another audio reactive background. You can see I'm using layer 106, which is just the music from the soundtrack. And I'm using Kaleidoscope again to turn it into a circular pattern and I'm tinting it grey. Okay, after this we have Explode and Spin Back. So here, the Explode and Spin Back is located in Core Melt Motion Transitions. Here it is, there. It has a little asterisk next to it. And here I've keyframed the transition time from zero at the beginning to 
this to one, which means it goes through the whole thing. And the preset comes, the number of H and V are much lower, and I've increased them a lot, sort of making the explosion a bit higher resolution. And I've changed the seed and the number of times spinning to three, and I've turned spin X and spin Y on. Next we have the ventilator shaft, which is located in core melt, grunge and stylized 3D ventilator shaft. And here I'm using the mesh grid, and I've keyframed the fog distance and the fog softness. So the fog distance starts at zero and slowly increases, whereas the fog softness goes from 30 down to 3. And I've created something that looks like a pupil. Next we have sparkles. And here we've, we find them in core melt, glows and blur, sparkle and sparkle edges. I've applied sparkles to the text and to the image. It's important to keyframe the sparkle angle from beginning to end for moving objects and change the parameters. So here I have the text. In, in sparkle I'm changing, I'm keyframing the angle from minus 45 to minus 20 just to give it a bit of dynamism. Okay, now here, when the diamond splashes into the water, I'm using core melt, shatter, grunge and stylize, distort liquid metal, and I'm also using distort water drop. So. For the distort water drop, I've set the animation begins at zero and it goes up till it's almost at full capacity, which is quite subtle rippling across the text. The more obvious effect is the distort liquid metal, where I've just sort of let it do its thing. And then finally we have codec damage in which I'm using two layers, a black solid. Here we've got, I'll isolate them for you. Here we've got analog glitch. And these are located in core melt, grunge and stylize digital glitch, analog glitch, and codec damage. And I've pumped up the noise on this background layer, and I put codec damage in, and digital glitch. And we've got some movement going on with the text, where I've got digital glitch and codec damage, and I've just slowly increased the parameters in the codec damage. I slowly increased the master glitch from zero to a lot more. Getting this nice, dirty, grungy look. So the digital glitch softens up the codec damage with its nice jpeg -y feel. And that's it. At the end, I've used VU animation pixel sticks, which I also used at the beginning. And I'm using a combination of the voice and the music. And I made the bar color orange and make the blend mode add. And I've just got two layers here to sort of give it a saturated look. But also, most importantly, I'm using 
the 3D transform. So you can see here, I'm moving the position of the X, Y, and Z and the rotation, trying to get it in line with the logo at the end. So that's it. The plugin packs used were Core Melt Luminous, Delta, Shatter, Vivu, and ImageFlow. You can download the project file and a free 15 day trial of all these effects. You can ask questions about this tutorial in the Creative Cow Core Melt user forum.